Japan, 1980. The Godzilla franchise was taking a much needed break. Mobile Suit Gundam finally found its audience, and Nintendo's status as a game company was in its infancy. Founded as a playing card company in 1889, it began making video games in 1974. By 1979, it suffered their first flop with Radar Scope. It was a moderate success in Japan at first, but Nintendo oversold the game to the North American market, whose tastes were moving away from space shooters. High-pitched sound effects didn't help this case either. Nintendo's CEO, Hiroshi Yamauchi, called him one of its original designers, 28-year-old Shigeru Miyamoto, to fix it. Miyamoto realized that saving radar scope was a lost cause, and decided to make something completely new. The end result? Donkey Kong. Nintendo had previously tried to reach an agreement with King Features Syndicate to create an arcade game based on Popeye, but the plans fell through. They would, however, eventually make one for real, but that's another story. The concepts, however, still remain. In place of Bluto, you had a large monkey. You had a parody of Sionera Damsels in place of olive oil, and Mallet substituted for spinach. The hero of the game, however, bore little resemblance to being Satan. He was given overalls so the player could see his arms. His nose was big, and he was given a hat and mustache. Nintendo dubbed him Jumpman. Fatefully, a resemblance would be noted between Jumpman and the landlord of Nintendo's American branch, Mario Sigali. Ever since that moment, the character was renamed in his honor. In the game, Donkey Kong steals a pretty young lady named Pauline and carries her off to a construction site. As Mario the Carpenter, you have to save her. Yes, I said Carpenter. The idea of him being a plumber wouldn't be around until 1983 at the earliest. You traverse the construction site, avoiding stuff like barrels, fireballs, and springboards to get to Pauline, only to have Donkey Kong carry her off to a higher section of the site. This continues until you hit the 100 meter level. There, you take out the rivets, sending DK crashing down. It proved to be really popular on both sides of the Pacific, eventually seeing ports on home consoles like the Atari 2600, Intellivision, and ColecoVision. In 1982, a year after Donkey Kong hit arcades, Universal Pictures claimed that Nintendo plagiarized King Kong, a film that the studio allegedly held the rights to, and slapped them with a lawsuit. It was revealed that the naming of the game was completely coincidental. Miyamoto originally wanted to call the game stubborn Gorilla in order to make it clear that the enemy wasn't evil. But his weak grasp of the English language made him consult an English-Japanese dictionary. The word donkey had the connotation of stubborn, and Kong was slang for monkey. Traditionally, the game itself was played before the court to show that it bore no resemblance to the movie it was accused of ripping off. It was ruled that Nintendo was innocent, citing a previous case that Universal themselves filed, one trying to prove that King Kong was in the public domain. Universal wound up paying Nintendo 1.8 million US dollars. Donkey Kong would not only be the launch pad for the Mario franchise, it would also spawn its own series by the mid-90s. In fact, this version of Donkey Kong is in those games as Cranky Kong. That just about does it for this game. Come back next time when Mario goes evil.